I was 19 years old and I had this terrifying feeling that I was behind. Now for me, this was my ultimate fear. I had something that I've been trying to avoid since my years in high school. I'd worked so hard to try to do as well as I could academically to prepare myself for what was next. I got a partial scholarship to go into university, but here I was, dropped out of university. I had basically no job. I was living in my parents' basement. It was COVID. I was a loser by all metrics. And I felt like, man, I am so behind. Man, I did all this stuff leading up into this point to make sure that I wasn't in this position, that I wouldn't be in this position, that I would be far and above ahead. But here I was feeling like I was a loser, feeling like I had nothing to offer the world, feeling like I was just a complete failure. Maybe you've been here too. I was experiencing experiencing major FOMO, fear of missing out. People are experiencing things that I'm not experiencing. They're doing things that maybe my time when I, I finally you know get money or get time or get whatever uh, opportunity, those things will all be passed and I'll miss out on all those things. I was experiencing major FOMO. And at that point too, I was watching all these people online accumulate all this money, say, oh, you know, you should be earning $10,000 a day. And if you're not, you're doing something wrong. And so here I was thinking to myself, well, I want to serve God. I want to, I want to honor God. I want to reach people for Jesus, but I also want to be successful. I also want to be significant. I also want to have these opportunities and these experiences. I want to be popular. I want to be known. So what changed my mind? Well, through a number of events, God had been teaching me that all the hustle, all the work that I was putting in, all the things that I felt like I needed to do in order to not be behind, a lot of it was distracting me from my true purpose, from my true calling. What God is welcoming me into and what he wants me to step into is something very different. It's not this disconnected hustle and hurry after the things of this world, this never ending string of discontentment from one thing to another thing to another thing until you finally retire in your old age and then you die with all this stuff. Oh, thank you, God, that at least I wasn't behind. Thank you that I was above all my peers. Thank you that I had all the nicest stuff. Thank you that I had all the nicest houses and the boat and everything that I wanted. Thank you, Lord. Is that the prayer that I want to pray? Or is it, God, thank you that I wasn't distracted by all that stuff that I didn't need. Thank you that you gave me contentment to be okay with being behind. Thank you that you taught me that I didn't need all that stuff. That is where I want to be. When I see an unhurried life, when I see a slow behind life, um, this is what I see. I see intentionality. I see peace. I see an unhurried way of living. I see generosity. I see freedom, contentment, restfulness, N not consumed with just busying myself with work because I feel guilty or because of my insecurities. Now you might be saying, Isaac, this sounds nice and all, but but it's still, it feels wrong. I feel like I need to be ahead. I need to be measuring up. I need to be doing more. Here's the deal. You think about Jesus and the disciples, okay? Do you think they were behind or ahead. Now, if somebody looked at them, okay, from our point of view, the way that we look at life nowadays, um, a lot of them had left their life. They had all left their life in some capacity, right? You think about the fishermen. They had just packed up and left. They're following Jesus now. They're not doing that anymore. Dang, that's crazy. All the other fishermen that were competing with them, they're like, ha, ah, yeah, we're ahead now. We're doing, now we're killing it. Now we're cornering the, the business market. Do you think the disciples were behind or ahead? I think they were ahead. Now to the world, yeah, they definitely seem behind because on, in metrics, Jesus, Jesus had no place to lay his head. He was moving from place to place to place. In terms of worldly security, there wasn't much for him to be, to have. But what was there? There was community. There was peace. There was restfulness. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a house and I'm not saying you shouldn't have a job, but I'm saying that our attachment to these things in order to give us security, to make us feel good about ourselves, man, we're looking, we're looking at these things for something that they, they can't provide us and they shouldn't provide us. To follow Jesus is the most restful, peaceful, 
beneficial thing we could possibly do. And sometimes that means, a lot of times, it means slowing down. I think about Mary and Martha. Okay, um, Martha was caught up in service, in doing, in trying to host, in trying to do more, right? Meanwhile, where was Mary? At the feet of Jesus. And what does Jesus say to her? What does Jesus say to Martha? Let's look at this for a second. He says, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Sometimes being behind means choosing the good portion. That is Jesus. I can see all these examples in the scripture of people that on the outward you would think, They're going backwards. They're going behind. They're going too slow. They're taking a step back. They're taking a step away from the world, away from what the world values and a step towards Jesus and what he values. Jesus runs on a different metric. He's not caught up in the hustle and bustle of the world. What your next promotion is going to be like, how much money you're making, how much success or accolades or attention or friends and all these things that we put so much of our value into and we measure ourselves against other people, Jesus is like, well, what is your relationship to me like? Do you have time for me? Do you have time to slow yourself? Here's the deal. Maybe this sounds just too far beyond what you could manage at this point. You say, Isaac, I, I want to live a slow life. I want to live an unhurried life. I want to live a life where I'm not concerned about whether I'm behind or ahead, but I'm just trying to make things work. And life is hard and I need to hustle and I need to work and I need to figure things out and I feel hurried and I feel overwhelmed because that's just how life has to be for me. And I understand that because there's definitely been seasons of my life that have been so filled with hustle and hurry and distractedness and it just feels like that's how it has to be. But I want to I want to offer you some things that I've and me and my wife have in, uh, incorporated into our life and some of the values that we have. We don't do this perfectly, not even close, but this is these are our values. This is what we strive for. And maybe this will help you a little bit in in incorporating some of these things in the way that you think about your life as you're not um, plagued by these insecurities that you need to be ahead. First thing is evaluate what you're doing with your time and cut out the things that aren't valuable, right? When me and my wife got married, we cut out a lot of the things that we were doing, uh, activities, da 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 da, just so then we could hone down on what we wanted to do to, together in our collective mission, but also to say, hey, like this isn't super valuable. I don't really need to be doing this. I'm going to free up time for myself to live a less overwhelmed, less hurried life, to have some space, to have some breath in my week. So then it's not just tight, you know, one thing after another, after another, after another. I don't know. We found that to be really good for our souls to say, there's a few days a week where we just have nothing, where we can just explore together, where we can just, you know, go out and, and uh, you know, go to a farmer's market, or we can just hang out at home. And just having that rhythm of that freedom, giving more time for ourselves to just be, has provided us a lot of fun growth. Second thing is live within your means. This seems so obvious, but it's so countercultural to spend beyond what you can make because you're trying to measure up to everyone else to buy a house too early and you become house poor because I just need a house because we need a house because that's where we should be in life. My wife and I talk about this a lot because we feel that pressure to take the next step, to buy the house, to to buy the new car, to, to do these different things because you want to prove to other people that you're doing well, that you're doing enough, that and also for me that I'm providing, that I'm being a man, that I'm that I'm giving my my wife enough, and that I'm giving her the life that she deserves. You have all this these outside pressures, but when we have a conversation, we're like, actually, we don't need this stuff. We don't need a new car. We don't need a house. Like we're fine. We're actually very happy and content. And to just sit in that and to be okay with that, it's really a freeing thing. Cause Hey, like if my paycheck isn't as much as it was on one month to the next month, then it's like, it's not that big a deal because we're living within our means. It gives you freedom. It gives you rest. It really provides peace. The third thing is choose to go the long way in our culture. Ever since the industrial revolution, um, we have been programmed like robots. We've been treated like robots and our morality, our metric system, uh, how we scale something to be good or bad has been gauged off of that. Robots are the best when they're the most efficient. If a robot is not efficient, then it's not a good robot. Okay. We, we see humans as the same way. If you're not efficient, then you're not good. Here's the thing. We've chosen to go the long way. 
to explore creativity um, and not just efficiency. To not just say, oh, just get it done, but let's explore this. Let's value creativity just as much as we value efficiency, if not more. And to go the long way because there's so much beauty to be had there. And that's part of God's plan. And that's part of what God has invited us into is experiencing beauty. So whether that means making a meal together when we could have eaten something up because it's fun to explore. And maybe it's not the most efficient, but it is the most creative and fun. Or trying to build something ourselves out of uh, you know, a piece of furniture or fixing something up or or decorating our home with all sorts of odds and ends when we could just go to you know the local retail store and just buy it all. But instead, we love thrifting and doing things like that. Like, go the long way because I think you're going to encounter so much beauty, fun, and it's not going to feel as much of a competition against other people to like, I need my home needs to look this way or my life needs to look this way or I need to do these things because I'm competing. It's like, we're going to choose to go slow. We're going to choose to be behind. Now, these are really just our values and our goals and, you know, we fail in a lot of ways. But um, what we found is that this helps us be a lot more present, content and free in the way that we live our life. Look, I don't care that I'm behind. I don't need to be ahead. Because that's not, I'm not beholden to them. I'm not beholden to compare myself to other people. Friend, that is such a more fulfilling place to be than to constantly be measuring yourself and to say, I'm behind or be anxious and say, I need to get here. I need to get this job or I need to do this because what are people going to think of me? Now that thought really is built out of insecurity. It's saying, oh, I'm not enough. I need to do more. I'm, you know, it's built out of this, this insecurity, uh, insecure attachment to God. We don't really believe that we're his child. We don't really believe that that's the most important connection that we have. We feel like we need to prove ourselves to other people. And we have this insecurity that really has built, been built out of the wounds that we've experienced in our life or sin that is, that is just, you know, corrupted our hearts. And, and it's really plaguing you. It really is because this is, this is not the way that you need to live your life. It really isn't. And I've been there and I'm still working through it. But friend, I want you to know that God cares for you and he loves his children. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you've experienced his transformation in believing in Jesus, in asking God, God, forgive me of my sin. And I want to put my faith in you. If you've experienced that transformation and that new relationship with God, him saving you from your sins. Nothing can shake you from that security. And now he's your dad. He's your father. So shouldn't he be the one that you're trying to please? Shouldn't he be the one that you're trying to look to and what he values as opposed to all these other people that who cares where they're at? The father says, take your time. It's okay to be slow. Man, that's where I want to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I ask you to subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time and join us on Patreon down below. That would be a huge help in supporting this ministry. Until next time, God bless.